So here I took my sketch, my raster image, I brought it into a layer, I took its opacity down to about 15%, and then I built a new layer on top and I locked the one underneath. And now, just like we did in Photoshop, I can build black shapes with no stroke. So before you start building shapes, you can set the parameters for them. And then, just like in Photoshop with those vector shape tools, you can find a rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle tool, an ellipse tool, a polygon tool. They have a new one, a star tool. And basically, I can start, right? I can take my ellipse, hold down shift so it stays a circle, and kind of fill in the black shape that I want to edit from. And then I can use these move tools. This is what I call the, the large selection tool, which is a black arrow. And then you have the small selection tool, or what the program calls the direct selection tool. Both of them you can select the whole shape, but the direct selection tool also allows you to pick individual anchor points. And then you can modify them and kind of change them, transform them, right? What's nice about Illustrator is Command Z always works. But realize for a second how hard it would be for me to cut all those white shapes out of this, right? Using shape tools, like using a bunch of rounded rectangles and then um, basically warping them. So one thing I can do is I can use the eraser. And if I double click on the eraser, I can set the size of it. That's too big. I can even make it pressure sensitive with my tablet, right? But you have to set a variation. So we have a lot of options. This is how you cut away. This is like scissors cutting away from your, from your shape, right? So it's like the AT&T logo. But this is now a vector, not a raster. So if I zoom in on it, you'll see that it's perfectly clean, whereas the image behind it is pixel based. And if I, uh, click on the drop down arrow next to the layer, it will show me each individual path. And each path has its own anchor points that set its curve or its straight, right? And then each path, for instance, that one, I could change the color of if I want, just like I could with different shape tools in Photoshop. And then also each of these paths, I can also give it what's called a stroke. And I can play with the width of that stroke, just like you can as a layer style in Photoshop. Now, all we're trying to do is create black shapes to begin with, right? So depending on your design, this might be a good way to go, to layer with shape tools and then maybe erase away from them or modify them. And I'll show you how to modify vector shapes. Another tool that might be useful to you is the pen tool. This is the most common tool in Illustrator. With the pen tool, I'm going to do it on a new layer here. Right. What I can do is just click and plot a point, an anchor, and then plot another point, and then pull it out to get a curve. This is what we saw in that video. And then pull it out to get another curve pull it out to get another curve, pull it out to get another curve, pull it out to get another curve. And this is how you can get more complex shapes. But it takes a while. Now remember, every anchor you can modify. So let's just say, okay, I'm finished, I'm going to close it around and make it a closed path. But now I'm going to go in and find those individual anchor points. It has a stroke. I need to turn that stroke off, right? And now I can use the direct selection tool and select each anchor point and move it to where I need it to be. And I can play with these handles individually and tweak them to be exactly what I want. And I can even get rid of anchor points because weird things can start to happen. So under the pen tool, you'll see the delete anchor point tool, which you can just use minus for. 
and you can keep modifying these. You also have what's called the anchor point tool. It used to be called the, um, it was like the conversion tool or something, but that's if you need to make a straight into a curve, right? And then if you use the add anchor point tool, you can add an anchor onto the path, which then allows you with the direct selection tool to move it and alter its curves, right? So we have full control of our shapes, kind of how we cut them. If I want to convert the anchor point, I go back to that pin tool and I can just pull one half of the curve, right? So on and on. That's how the pin tool works. It can be very precise. It is not my favorite. What is my favorite is the pencil tool. And the pencil tool, you will find right above the eraser in the drawer. And what's great about the pencil tool is you can double click it and set it to be smoother or more accurate. And I tend to like to have it a little bit more towards smooth than accurate. And then once you see anchor points, you can simply redraw them. So this is something we weren't allowed to do in Photoshop. We can just make our own shape, right? And if I want to be able to see how my shape relates to my uh, sketch underneath, I can play with its transparency and just take it down to about 50%. So I can see how it maps to the shape I'm trying to make underneath. Now here's how the pencil tool works. As long as you start on the path and end on the path, it's like magic scissors. It will automatically smooth out to your settings, but you have to end on the path and start on the path to get a new line, right? And what I like about this is it requires you to really cut out each shape. So you're not just thinking, the, thinking of them as lines anymore. So it's in your, your tool window. It's right above the eraser in that drawer. It's with another tool called the shaper tool. So it's the second one down. And then with any of these tools, like the eraser or the pencil, if you double click on the tool itself, you get to the different options. So it's a little different in its, um, I don't know, arrangement or accessibility than Photoshop. It doesn't have the options automatically at the top. Instead, it has the stroke and fill options at the top. So your tool options, you double click and you get them in a window. And you can make them pressure sensitive. So for the eraser tool, you can make it pressure sensitive for size. The pencil tool, you can, you can only set how accurate or smooth it is. Okay, so I could draw my whole shape this way, right? But notice that it's only going to be the outside shape because it's just like cutting out of paper. So if I want these little undercuts, I have to build them in. So that is one way to use Illustrator. Put in some basic shapes and then refine them with more customized shapes. And the more you practice with that, the more comfortable it gets, the more you might fall in love with it. Who knows? But there's another way that you can start in Illustrator besides just working on top of your sketch and then modifying vector shapes. And it's very important to know how to do that. But the other way, whoops, is to do this. Okay, so I'm going to leave this for now. Let me save this as just one example. So I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 5, Embattled Earth Graphic Symbol. Um, vector shape. And I'm going to save it as an AI file, which is the working file type for Adobe Illustrator. Only opens in Illustrator, but will immediately open within Illustrator works great. And so while I'm working on it, I want it that way. Okay. The next approach, I'm going to close this one so you're not confused. I'm going to take that same sketch and I'm going to open it within Illustrator and I'm going to do something else as soon as I bring it in. I'm not going to decrease its transparency and lock it. 
Instead, I'm going to click on it. And then I am going to use some of the options it shows me at the top. Notice it doesn't show me a fill and stroke option because this is not a vector, this is a raster. This has black, white, and gray pixels. So I am going to use the image trace option. And I'm going to scroll down and choose black and white logo just for the presets. And now what it's doing is it's showing me how it would trace this as a vector, how it would draw all those shapes for me. And because I took the time to clean it up quite a bit in Photoshop already and get the proportions and the thicknesses of lines I wanted, these defaults might be pretty close, but notice how it's a little wonky. You know, it's not perfectly clean, not as clean as it would be as if I cut it out of a perfect circle. So this gives you a slightly more hand-done approach, but you can always modify it. So this is called live tracing. Now to get better results than this, the problem is with the black and white settings, it's cutting out not just black shapes, but also white shapes. And I don't want that. I want just white shapes. So what you do is you click on the image trace panel. The options are over here. You'll also find it under window for image trace. And you want to go to the advanced options. So it's only previewing right now what it would look like as a vector. So if I want it to be less sensitive, I can push the slider towards less. And if I do it enough, even like the dark gray pixels won't register as black anymore. So that's one way you can customize it. If you want it to get thicker and a little bit bolder, you can allow it to accept more of your, of your soft, you know, dark gray pixels as black or even your lighter gray pixels. So that looks about right. Then the other options you have, and you can zoom in and out with the same shortcuts as Photoshop, Command minus Command plus, is I can play with simplifying it a little bit. You see all of these little jigs and jogs, or zigs and zags. I'm going to try to limit that by making it out of fewer paths in general, and that will soften it. So the more paths you have, the kind of lumpier it will be. The fewer paths you have, the smoother it will be, but you might lose detail. It's like telling your scissors how, um, how smoothly it can take a, co a corner, right? So the computer doesn't know when it should do a really tight corner and when it should do a really soft corner, but you can kind of pick what the best average is. And I like what that's doing for the hand, right? And I can customize where I don't like what that's doing for the other parts. The next is, do I want more corners or fewer corners, right? And that will simplify it in a different way, but it will often give you these little kind of weird unclosed paths. Because remember, these are just cutouts of shapes now. Let me see if I can find one. Like this. So if you don't allow for many corners, you'll start to get these little stair steps sometimes. So you just find the settings that kind of work for you. And we're looking for a logo that's versatile, simple, clear, effective. And so I'm trying to find the, the, the simplest way to show what I want to show with these settings. And then the last one is noise. Noise is a pretty simple one, but if you're working from like something that's a dirty piece of paper, it's going to be really important to limit your noise where you don't want anything that's that's really small being turned into its own path and that will help get get rid of little um variances but if you don't have dirty paper you can have allow quite a bit of noise and you'll get more sensitivity i'm looking at that little stair step trying to find them all right so it's just like cutting it out of paper. Now, once I'm happy with it, very important, under those advanced settings within the image trace window, I want to say ignore the white. So I check the box that is ignore white. And that will make it just a black cutout. 
on an empty background. And that's